Right, hello everybody, welcome down to Warrington Golf Club. I'm Matt Fryer and today I'm here to help you fix that dreaded slice. So guys, if this is one of your first videos on my channel, do remember to hit that subscribe button, also hit the notification bell, so you don't miss out on any future videos to help you improve your golf this year. So, like I said at the start of the video, we're going to be talking about that dreaded slice because I would imagine the majority of people watching this video now suffer with that slice shot. And it is one that, you know, is number one going to be causing us a lot of uh, loss in distance and also causing us to miss a few fairways. It's probably a shot that, you know, you've had a good round going, you've sliced one out of bounds on 18 and then all of a sudden your handicap or your score isn't where you wanted it to be. Um, and if we can sort Sort the, sort the slice out we would be seeing that you know we should get some more distance because I would imagine watching this video you're probably the player who aims if you're a right-handed player down the left hand side of the fairway in the hope that the ball is going to curve back round to the right and into the middle which is going to be causing us a loss of distance and also if you don't quite get the curve you're probably not going to find the fairway so if we can sort it we'll get those two factors sorted and also we're going to be going in with shorter irons generally so it should make the second part of the game a little bit easier for us. So one of the things that I've been finding quite a lot of success with at the moment is using analogies with my lessons trying to describe what I want them to do in the golf swing via the use of liking it to another sport and in that sport today I'm talking generally about tennis tennis ping pong or badminton I don't know too much about badminton but tennis or ping pong when I've used these analogies it's really helped my students start to get rid of the slice because by breaking it down in the simple terms of what we do with a tennis racket or a ping pong racket something seems to really click the light bulb goes on and they think oh right it's that simple that's that's all i'm trying to do all right well it's the golf swing i thought there was more to it i thought we had to really overcomplicate it but in like in those sports if we do the two things we've got the direction of the racket or the club and we've got the direction of the racket face or the club face and if we can blend the two things together and get the right directions then hopefully we should see we start to get rid of our slice so what i'm talking about now if we if we picture a tennis player let's use roger Federer, one of you know the all-time greatest if we think about him playing one of the shots where he's playing a fast forehand down the baseline, running it all, all the way down the side of the court, to him playing a shot where he's hitting a little spinny one at the net, the two swings do not look the same. And it's very much the same to golf. Because when Frederick, if I was playing towards you now at the camera, if I was to going to go and play my spinny cut-up shot, what we'd see, if you imagine my hand being the racket face, what we'd see is something where the racket face never actually closes over. He comes in, and the bit of the racket that the ball is going to make impact with is always looking up to the sky and if we had the net sort of here the racket travels down it he gets to a point where he's slicing across this golf ball and imparting a vast amount of spin very much like the slice swing what we'd see for someone who does that we'd have the face left open at this point and they slide across the golf ball in turn we see the same amount of spin the ball goes jettisoning off down the left hand side of target and then starts to slice back out either past target or even further out to the right of target or because the face was open and the club was traveling a bit across that so if we then go to the example or the analogy of him hitting a forehand shot where we see the ball coming out really quick off his racket and it's traveling down that line and we see it sometimes even having a tiny little bit of draw on it it tends to travel a little bit lower it comes out a lot quicker and the one thing you'd see from there would be again if the back of my hand was the racket face as the ball's coming to me now he comes in and he lets the racket swing from inside the tennis ball whilst he lets the racket face release over. So as that ball then makes contact, it comes shooting out really quick with a tiny little bit of draw, generally a very, very straight shot. And we see it hurtling down one bounce and it's through, hits the backboard. And that again is from him coming from the inside as opposed to the 
outside with his spinny shot and not releasing the racket face he comes in and it might be as you're thinking of this now if we watched him he might use two hands to do it he might use one hand he might even do the same with a backhand and what i try and get my students to think about is the hand they feel most dominant within the golf swing now it might be something you've never thought of but once you start hitting a few balls and you make a few swings it might be that you as a right-handed player you feel really that the right hand is more in control as you're making your golf swings it might even be the left as you go through it but there'll be one particular hand if you just spent maybe 10 15 balls down at the range where you start to get the idea of which hand you feel more in control of and then what i tend to do with my students is say right well that hand that you've got what well, let's use i'm going to use my right hand as my example here now so if i were to address a golf ball here let's put one in and get my glove on what we have to think about again I was using my palm as the racket face as an example and we can do very much the same when I come to actually grip a shot here because if again this was the racket face like this once I've taken my grip my palm is now facing target if I were to hit my slice shot we'd see generally as I'd be coming through, my palm is now looking up towards the sky. It never actually releases over until the end when it's too late of where the target is. So it'd be something where it's held, held, held. And again, we see the face there being held as I do this. And then once I've actually hit the ball, I think, oh, that's slicing. I'll try and save it. It's too late as we know at that point. As where? if i were now to try and use my tennis analogy i'd be thinking instead of the club coming across and holding my palm up well he makes this simple motion and i quite simply just get my students to stand and think right which hand is it it's going to be my right hand that's what i'm going for right well that's not normally what i do in my golf swing anyway that feels totally different my hand's coming in from the inside of the golf ball now and i'm going to let it turn over so once you've had a few practice swings you should start to feel okay what's my palm doing just imagine that tennis shot get that in my mind and i feel the club comes from the inside my hand turns over i start to let my racket face or my palm rotate over as i'm coming to the golf ball and that's one of the key things as well you're not trying to do it at that split second at impact try and make the feeling happen all the way down in the downswing because you will have been a slicer and someone who's been holding the racket you can't do it at impact it's so quick it's milliseconds the chances of you getting it squared up then are you know seriously seriously impossible so try and feel this exaggeration of rolling your racket face on the way down or your palm just so by the time you get back to impact it should have squared up and there'd be nothing wrong as well with actually hitting a few with a bit of right to left curvature onto it sometimes i sort of advocate that i want to see that we are closing the face over i want to get that face turning over as opposed to being held if it's going right to left to start off with and starts a little bit left that's completely fine we can straighten it out what we need to see is that you're actually changing how you release the golf club so have a few of those swings where you're thinking of this analogy of the tennis player let the racket face turn over it's coming from the inside imagine you're roger federer and then once you're into it take your setup and just have that as your one swing thought now so you're thinking return it let the racket face turn over a little bit get in I really should listen to my own tips. That's the straightest drive I've hit in ages. Straight out the middle, bulleted. You'll have to take my word for that as well, but that was mega. So, a nice, simple analogy that we can use. Imagine a tennis stroke. And even if you've not played it, just have a watch of maybe a couple of tennis clips on YouTube. See what the difference is between a slice and a forehand shot. If you can start to figure out that your right hand or your left hand, whichever one you feel more dominant with, is going to be like the racket face and that in turn will control your club face, you should start to see that you are going to be limiting that slice and even maybe start to hit some little draw shots. So get out on the range, 
give it a go see how it works for you guys let me know in the comments down below has this helped do you like the idea of analogies in the golf swing also do remember hit that subscribe button so many more videos coming to help you improve your golf also got some giveaways coming up soon so remember you've got to be subscribed to get involved with those so do hit the subscribe button follow me on my social media if you do want to come and see me at trafford as well all the information is linked down below start thinking of your club as a racket and then stop that slice i'll see you in the next video